Colby has put together some extension proposals for a few Mariners. We'll discuss if we would actually offer them, if the player would take it, and more coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, January 24, 2024. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Patton out for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N to get yourself started. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. So we get asked a lot about which players the Maris could extend next. So today we're going to dive into that, you know, a little bit. Uh, like I said, in the cold open, Colby has come up with four extension proposals and we're going to work through them right now, starting with one Mr. Matt Brash. Seven year, $47.5 million extension. That buys out the arbitration years in 2025, 2026, 2027, and 2028. And also the free agent years in 2029 and 2030 10 million dollars in 2029 12 million dollars in 2030 so not just one free agent year being bought out but two so colby tell us a little bit more about your process uh with this extension and uh do you think the mariners would offer it should they offer it do you think brash would take it yeah so a couple things at play here first of all his 2025 arb number is an estimate but Brash might be making league minimum next year, which in theory would give him even more incentive more incentive to take a deal like this. But um, what the interesting thing with Brash is that he may or may not be Super 2 uh, eligible. Uh, typically, the way that works is if, if, is if you have two years of service time plus an additional 120 to 125 days is usually what it lands between. Um, then you get essentially a, a third year. You're essentially awarded as if you're ARB1. Uh, so you get an extra year of arbitration. Brash is at 121, 1 and 121, which uh, after this year would be 2 and 121. That probably makes him Super 2 eligible, but it might not. The The cutoff might be 123 or something. So mm-hmm. we're going. I'm going to assume that he's going to be Super 2 eligible, or I was when I made this. Uh, when you look at the numbers there that I projected for his ARB, that is roughly the same amount that Edwin Diaz uh, got uh, when he went through arbitration. However, he did not. Uh, however, these numbers are not adjusted for inflation, which is part of the allure for the Mariners is that, you know, these numbers are right now they seem high. But in, you know, three, four years, when those big numbers start to hit, it's going to be really a lot cheaper. Um, and then you buy out two free agent years at $10 million and, and $12 million, uh, Matt Brash on the open market right now, probably getting 15 to $18 million a year. He's a two win reliever. Um, so, uh, I feel really good about that. And even if Brash is just kind of a, a good, not great reliever, then that market has been set this year too. It's about nine to $12 million for that. Yep. So in four or five years, that number is probably going to jump up to 14, $15 million for the really good relievers. That's just inflation and in, in how the game works. So uh, essentially right now is that the Mariners, they lock him in for the next seven years. Uh, they buy out all of his RB years, two years of free agency, and they do it at an AAV of about a little less than 7 million bucks uh, for an elite uh, reliever, uh, back end mm-hmm. high leverage reliever. Uh, I think that is something they would consider. Uh, I think it's a pretty good, a pretty good idea on Brash's part as well, because pitchers are, are, you know, volatile, especially pitchers who like Brash sometimes struggle with command. Uh, so I think that's a, an interesting uh, offer for a pitcher, particularly a relief pitcher. Is it really aggressive? Sure. I, I bet the Mariners would really love to do like seven and 35 million, but I'm trying to get the player to sign this. So I'm going seven, 47 and a half getting two years of, of free agency at what will be by the time we get to 2029 and 2020 and 2030 pretty significant bargains relative to the rest of the market. 
uh, there's risk here for the Mariners. If Brash implodes, if Brash gets hurt or whatever, they're on the hook for this money. And there's really no reason for them to do it right now because they could just go year to year. I mean, Brash doesn't start to get really expensive for a reliever until 2027, which is three mm-hmm. years away. So um, they don't have to do this. And because they don't, maybe the Mariners don't offer this and they're, they would offer something similar or closer to like seven and 35. Sure. Uh, to buy a little bit of safety on their end. But I think to get Brash to do it, um, I think I think this is pretty close to what you'd have to offer. We talk all the time about the volatility of bullpens, of relievers. And I think from Brash's perspective, you kind of have to recognize your own potential volatility as a reliever. And while you might be sacrificing, you know, 10, 15, 20-ish million dollars in potential earning in 2029 2030 even 2031 by taking this extension you have no idea where you're going to be in your career again as a reliever uh by that point you know for the mariners though again the that works both ways right because of the volatility of relievers of of bullpen guys that for the mariners specifically like this shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things but for the Mariners specifically you know almost 50 million dollars in guaranteed salary is is a lot of money them and so to commit that you know over seven years yes but to commit that in general to uh to a reliever any reliever really uh is a risk but brash has already established himself as one of the elite relievers in baseball i don't see that changing anytime soon i think this is a pretty good bet i wouldn't say that it's a safe bet i wouldn't say that with really any reliever but i think that it's a pretty good bet to take if you're the mariners I would offer Matt Brash this or something close to this. You know, signing a reliever uh, to big money is always risky. But again, I, I think the number 47 and a half million like jumps out like that's a lot to give to a reliever. It's over seven years. Like it is. Yeah. It is, you know, six and a half million dollars a year for a guy who could be a, a two win reliever. Um, you know, six and a half million dollars a year, by the way, that's about what one win is worth. Uh, in the war formula. So yeah, uh, yeah, you're, you're not paying him for what he was last year. You're actually paying him for, you know, what you think of, he can be. Yeah, I mean, and, and so I think this is an interesting deal. I think it's, again, I still think it's possible. The Mariners look at this and go, let's talk about this next winter. Let's see you do it again. And then we'll get back to you. Right. Yeah. I, it's just, you, you do have to account for the risk that that is involved here. It, even if it is, you know, six and a half or whatever million dollars yeah. over, you know, so, you know, each year for the next seven years, um, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. But again, those things, especially if you're going to extend other players, those things do tend to to add up. And then, you know, you have to make some decisions like we've unfortunately seen this winter. Um, yeah. So, you know, and obviously I'm not trying to compare Matt Brash to Evan White, but just saying, you know, that the, there are, uh, especially when, when it comes to relievers, you never know when it just might go out like that. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's a really interesting case study, I think. Uh, but for both sides, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think both sides would would do it uh, or at least something similar to that. So we are going to talk about some of the bigger boys on the team. And I do mean literally in one case, Cal Raleigh. We're going to talk about Cal Raleigh in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. All right, sailors, the NFL regular season may be over, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can also find bets in the new Explore tab and make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays. While the Seahawks are done, Mariners baseball is almost here, folks. So is betting on Mariners baseball. But while you wait for the boys to take the field, you can still bet on the Kraken and Huskies basketball. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, and make your first bet a layup. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, L-O-C-K-D-O-N. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. 
And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. And as a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And on today's show, we are going through some extension candidates for the Mariners. Colby has come up with four extension proposals. We just talked about a Matt Brash one, which I think the Mariners and Brash would both uh, do, or at least something similar to that. But now we get into territory where it doesn't seem as clear, at least in in my opinion. Uh, So first, we're going to talk about Cal Raleigh, Big Dumper. Colby, you have a proposal here that is five years, $56 million. It buys out Cal's arbitration years in 2025, 2026, 2027, $6 million in 2025, $10 million in 2026, $15 million in 2027, and buys out one free agent year in 2028 at $20 million and also includes a 2029 mutual option for $25 million with a $5 million buyout so tell us about your process on this uh what do you think about this deal and Mm. do you think cal takes it do you think the mariners offer it where are you at with this i i think the mariners might offer would be willing to offer something similar to this i don't think cal takes it there's a lot of things at play here uh raleigh is a really interesting case he's going to make the league minimum for one more year And then his ARB number next year is kind of up in the air a little bit. Uh, If he has another four win season, it's going to be four to $6 million. So you project on the high end there. Um, And then, you know, just kind of a general outline of how you increase uh, arbitration. Um, So that's probably about what it is. I I think uh, when I was looking at comps, I looked at the Sean Murphy comp. Um, That was a six year deal worth $73 million. So just a little over 12 million AAV. Cal's getting a little over 11. But Murphy was three years, uh, had three years left of club control, uh, whereas Cal has four. Um, and then you look at the uh, the big year, the free agent year you're buying. JT Real Muto is the highest paid catcher in baseball. He made twenty three. He's making twenty three million AAV. So when you look at the twenty million guaranteed, and then you look at the well, it's really twenty five million guaranteed in year one. That is more than Real Muto because the buyout is guaranteed. So. Uh, he's making at least 25 million in the one free agent year that he's selling you that he's selling oh. you. So, um, you know, Cal is a, a catcher who catches a ton. Uh, okay. He's going to be 30 past 30 when this deal expires. Um, so there's a lot of risk here for the Mariners. That is a guy whose body could very easily wear down. And we already know Cal has been through the ringer uh, physically. Yeah. He has had several major injuries that he's played through. So it's a bit of risk here for the Mariners. Um but is this enough to, you know, get Cal to sign on? I don't know. Like the deal, obviously, it maxes out at six years, seventy-six million dollars, which is a little more than what Sean Murphy got. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think, you know, it's in the realm of reason. I think Cal probably looks at it and says, you know, let's let's if I'm gonna get, sell you a free agent year, I'm gonna sell it to you at like thirty million dollars because I want to adjust for inflation and all that stuff. So. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, if the Mariners came to Cal with this, I think Cal would probably be like, how about we do, you know, five years and 70 million, I think is something that he would, he would listen to. And at that stage, it's a lot of risk for the Mariners. I mean, this is a lot of risk for the Mariners uh, because again, you know, you don't know how long Cal can catch uh, and catching is a huge part of his value to you. So yeah, uh, this is, this is riskier than any of the other ones uh, I think I proposed today. Uh, I don't think Cal takes it. I don't know if the Mariners feel comfortable offering this, but I think this is what is at least the starting point uh, right. for any kind of conversation between the two sides. Yeah. Cal has a lot of wear on his body already. Already. Uh, mm-hmm. What does that look like in 2028? What does that look like in 2029 when he's 31, 32 years old? Yeah, I think that's a very fair um, thing to to account for here, or at least think about, uh, especially if you're the Mariners and, and looking at the long-term um, viability of Cal behind the plate. Um, Cal right now is a top five, top six producer uh, mm-hmm. at one of the most premium positions in baseball, if not the most premium position in all of baseball. 
um, you know, offensive producer, one of the best defenders in, in, in the game as well uh, at that position. And if you lose that, if you lose that element of it, he's just not as valuable of a player. That's just the fact of the matter. As much as mm-hmm. I love Cal, that's just he's just not as valuable if he's not catching. Um, and it's, it makes and it makes me less inclined to give him, yeah. you know, 25, 30 ish million dollars. Right. So mm-hmm. it's it's possible the back could still improve, though. It, it did improve last yeah. year. So maybe he becomes, you know, a 330 on base guy and a 250 slot or 250 batting average. And he keeps the power and he and that is a viable first base slash line. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking about moving Cal to first base at some point, not anytime soon, but at some point, maybe. But then that makes him less valuable as a player. First basemen are much easier to find than catchers. So it's a very difficult deal to navigate. There's a lot of, you know, intricacies. And if Cal is looking for the the JT Real Muto offer, as he may be worth it, like he might be worth that in 2025. But is he going to be in 2028 when he's a free agent and he's got three more years or four more years of of you know catching on on his knees and on his back? Probably not. And the JT Romuto deal started to look pretty bad for the Phillies. He was very disappointing last year. You have to be careful when you're giving catchers extensions. Yeah. So if you're Cal, you know, you also have to take that into account. Like you got to be real with mm-hmm. yourself. And, you know, and his camp yeah. has to be, you know, real about it too. Does this make sense? Do you think that if you do bet on yourself, don't take this extension and get to free agency? Do you think that you're going to be able to get that? three four five year deal that is worth you know 25 30 million dollars a year whatever it's going to be you know with inflation by that point do you think you're going to be able to get that i don't know this one is really difficult for me in terms of uh, from cal's perspective from the mayor's perspective i think they do this i would offer this to him i think they would do this because really at the end of the day we're, we're he's not taking the mutual option most likely uh, so we're really it, talking about one additional year, right? And if you don't want it, then it's just a five million dollar. Like, and you, you it, yeah, and you can you can decline it too, right? So you pay five million dollars, and you know you you go your separate ways. But from Cal's point of view, it's a really difficult situation because you just you don't know how you're going to feel, what you're going to be able to do by that point, and if teams are going to be willing to commit to you for three, four, five years at the dollar figure that yeah. you're going to want. Mm-hmm. I think, I think if I was Cal, like if I was Cal's agent and I was, you know, open to an extension with Seattle and we're not doing that thing where it's like, Oh, well he's mad at management. So he's never going to sign here. Like we don't know that we don't money, money talks, money talks. Yeah, so, all that. so does winning and all that. Like we don't know. Okay. So let, we're not going to sit here and assume he won't be interested in signing with the Mariners. Cause we don't know. We have no reason to believe that. Uh, but if I was Cal's agent, I'd probably go back to the mayors and be like, we're thinking more like seven and 100. Like, mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know, that that's, a you know, a more reasonable AAV and all that stuff. But if I'm the Mariners, like I'm not paying you seven years guaranteed. I'm just, I'm not. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think if you're Cal, you're going to want them to essentially be the ones to give you that three year, four year deal basically like i'll sign this i'll sign this but you're going to tack on like i'm going to get my my jt real muto contract from you guys right now like yeah. on the back end of this and and if you're the yeah. mariners i don't think you can do that it's just too much risk you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen here as we go through some extension candidates on the mariners it's time to look at two of the mariners young starting pitchers we're going to start with bryce miller Colby, you have Miller at seven years, $52 million. You're assuming that he's super two, and we'll get into that in a second. It's pretty much what you talked about with uh, with Brash as well. Uh, this deal would buy out his arbitration years, again, assuming that he's super two in 2026, $3.5 million, 2027 at $6 million, 2028 at $8 million, and 2029 at $12 million. Also buys out one free agent year in 2030 at 18 million dollars and also includes a 2031 team option for 21 million dollars with a three million dollar buyout so basically you're adding two years of club control uh with this deal uh so again like i've asked you with the first two what was your process with this what do you think about uh the mariners offering this and and do you think miller would take it yeah so miller is almost certainly going to be super two he would have to spend 
about half of this season in the minors to not be super two eligible. That's just not mm-hmm. going to happen. Yeah. Um, particularly since the Mariners aren't going to add any, the Mariners would have to add two or three starting pitchers mm-hmm. for, for that to be even viable. So he's going right. to be super two. Um, I think when you look at Miller, um, you're looking at a guy who is reasonably safe. He has a very high floor because of the fastball value. He's been durable so far uh, throughout his entire baseball career. Um, so I, I think you're looking at the AAV there, or you're looking at the the RB years. I think that's probably about what he's going to get those years. I don't think you're saving a ton of money there. Mm-hmm. Where you're saving money if you're the Mariners is in that free agent year, because even if Bryce Miller is just a number four starter, look at what Jamison Tyone got from the Cubs last year. Look at what uh, Taiwan Walker got last year. Uh, look at what um, Marcus Stroman got this year. They're getting about eighteen million dollars a year. In 2024, in 2030, right. those guys are probably getting 22 to 25 million dollars mm-hmm. a year. And again, that's if Miller is basically just what he was last year. For right. and we think there's more upside here. Mm-hmm. So, I think where the Mariners actually end up saving their money, they'll save a little in R because those numbers aren't exactly aren't going to be adjusted for inflation when we get out to 27, 28, 29. So they'll save a little there. But I think they're bu- the the free agent year they're buying out. I think that is where they're going to save, you know, a lot of them. I think in the four R beers, they might save about $5 million total. Mm-hmm. I think in the free agent year, uh, the guaranteed free agent year, they're saving at least five more million dollars. And in the team option year, it's probably another 5 million as well. So I think they're giving, I think they're saving about $15 million yeah. just based on what Miller is now. Now you factor in the upside. And there's a chance this turns into one of the best bargains in baseball. So, right, uh, right. The risk that, for them. Go ahead. The, the the five million ish dollars that you said they might be saving in 2030 with the free agent year, mm-hmm. that could end up being 10, 15 million dollars yeah. in savings, depending on yeah. what Miller I mean, does over the next few years. I mean, you look at like, like Austin or uh, Aaron Nola. Uh, got what 27 million mm-hmm. yeah as just kind of a number three mm-hmm. like a good number three miller mm-hmm. can certainly do that so that's where the real savings comes in and if you're miller you get paid earlier yeah yeah like that's that's the instant you get paid earlier there's very little risk if you get hurt because if you're if you're bryce miller and you have thoracic outlook uh whatever syndrome the shoulder issue or you have yeah. really bad tommy john or something like that like you're probably not making this in your career like that's the risky run if you don't take this deal. Fifty-two million dollars in your back pocket, guaranteed. Tough to walk away from. So, yeah. I, I think that's the incentive for Miller to take it. And the Mariners' incentive is, hey, we think that Miller is going to be like a legitimate high-end number three starter. Seven years of that guy, and Miller. I think this deal ends for Bryce. It would end when he's thirty-one. Mm-hmm. Like still within his his prime, technically the tail end of it. But I think right. you know Bryce Miller on the open market, with what he has and what he's shown already, I think he's making at least on a seven year deal at least seventy five, eighty million bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's a long time to get there for Bryce. So fifty two million now isn't uh, isn't that bad of a deal. All right, so we're gonna move on to our last extension candidate, Brian Wu. The other one at the back end of the Mariners starting rotation. Your proposal here is seven years, thirty-seven and a half million dollars. Buys out arbitration years in twenty twenty-seven at four million dollars, twenty twenty-eight at seven million dollars, twenty twenty-nine at ten million dollars, and one free agent year in twenty thirty at fourteen million dollars with a twenty thirty-one team option for sixteen million dollars and a two million dollar buyout. So tell mm-hmm. us about it. Yeah, Wu's interesting. He's another guy who's right on that borderline of Super 2. I think he's at 121 days. Uh, So, again, it just seems more likely that he would spend time in the minors at some point over the next two years, Mm -hmm. um, which would knock him down. Because he only has to be in the minors for like three weeks to lose any shot of being a Super 2. So, in this case, I projected that he would get three normal years of ARB, which is roughly league minimum. Um, or pre-arb, roughly league minimum, and then he'll get the standard three years of arbitration. Um, so that's why the contract is a little bit less. But also, obviously, Brian Wu has more questions than Bryce Miller on the health front, mm-hmm. which is why the two numbers are pretty different. 
because major risk, major risk. Right. There's a lot more risk with Brian Wu present than there is with mm-hmm. Bryce Miller. Does yeah. that mean that Miller's definitely not going to get hurt? No. Does it mean that Wu's definitely going to get hurt again? No. But mm-hmm. this is the reality of the situation. So you have you have Brian Wu for six more years. He's probably over those six years going to make about twenty four million dollars, maybe. And that's if mm-hmm. he's healthy and if he's good. Uh, so this, this deal reflects the Mariners taking the risk on the health of Brian Wu. Um, and then obviously where you save your money is in that free agent year. Uh, the two of them, two years at $30 million. If Brian Wu continues to develop, like we think he could those two years for Wu probably 20 to $25 million each. Uh, so, so that, that's where you get your bargain, uh, on this deal. So the question here with both Miller and Wu is. It's a two-parter, actually. One, do you need to do this right now if you're the Mariners? And two, is this your only opportunity to do it? Probably no on both fronts. Like, you don't need to. Like, these guys are, these guys, you have them for six more years. Yeah. You don't need to do anything uh, with their contracts. But Mm -hmm. if you lock them in now, then, first of all, this doesn't hurt their trade value at all. So that's not in consideration. Second of all, you do have Luis Castillo, who's 31 years old. His contract will end before these two extensions kick in. Mm -hmm. And you have George Kirby and and Logan Gilbert. And if you don't think you can get one of those guys done, or maybe both of them, then you want the answers behind you and you want some cost control there. You want some certainty there. So uh, I think that's the, 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 urgency i guess for the mariners but none of the guys we talked about today do the mariners have to do anything this winter like they're not there's not any urgency here uh cal's got four years left brash has uh five years left technically miller and Wu both have six Mm -hmm. so yeah there's not a ton of urgency to get any of these deals done but again the cost certainty knowing what your budgets or knowing what your payroll is going to look like in a few years knowing where you might have to maneuver money around that is valuable. So I think when you look at the Mariners and you look at this proposal, like I think this is the one that is most likely to happen to be honest, because there is a ton of risk in Brian Wu, not uh, you know, not looking for an extension right now because he's already had two massive injuries. Yeah. And and if you're Wu, if you have an opportunity to get some money, some life changing money, you should probably do it. Mm-hmm. given what your injury yeah. history is you know maybe we can negotiate that eighth year option to make it a, a mutual option or a player option probably has to give the the buyout away to make that happen but if you still want to hit free agency at you know 25 years old or I'm sorry at 31 32 years old that is still going to be an option for you uh if you're woo so I, I think, you know, the Mar- where the Mariners are going to get their reward on this Brian Wu contract in theory, because remember, these are all wagers. These are all gambles where they're going to make the most of their money on that contract is in the free agent year they buy. Because if Brian Wu continues to develop like we think he could, he could realistically look the same as Bryce Miller, where Miller's looking like I'm going to get twenty three million dollars in my free agent years. Yeah, Wu could do the same. And if you're getting giving him fourteen and Wu's the number three we think he is, that's a massive bargain. Huge, huge. So that's where that's where the Mariners make their money back on this because the over the next six years, Brian Wu's probably going to make about 25 to $30 million just going through ARB. So, I would say, yeah, I, I would say this is the one that I feel the most confident about. Second would probably be Brash, third Miller, mm-hmm. and then fourth Raleigh. In terms of yeah. both sides coming together on what you proposed or something close to what you proposed. Yeah. I'm really confident the Mariners have talked to multiple of their own players, just checking in about, hey, what would an extension look like? Yeah. Like there's no I think they're have. constantly trying to do that. Yes. You know, I, I, think, I think we they, know they tried to do it with Logan. We know they tried to do it with Jared. Like they haven't yeah. done one since I'm well, I guess actually they've Julio and, and Dylan Moore were uh the last two. They haven't done one this winter. But I bet it's something they're still discussing uh, with a few mm-hmm. guys. So we know they're willing to do it. They did it with JP. They did it with Julio. You know, they did it with Dylan Moore. They did it with. And sometimes you know, they're Castillo. doing. It, well, and sometimes they're doing it with someone again. That, you know, like Dylan Moore, like Andres Munoz, that mm-hmm. you're not really expecting. You know, maybe right. they're working on like a Justin Topa extension behind the scenes. Yeah, it could be. I mean, if you could lock Topa in right now for three years and like five million dollars total, he's going to make one point two next year or something like that. Like. 
yeah, that makes sense. Again, cost cost control is like it maybe and if the Mariners have money to spend this winter, they saw money left in their payroll, but they can't get somebody to take it. Mm-hmm. You can still use it and you could basically buy some buy right. some more payroll relief two years down the road by signing right. an extension today. And, and and I do wonder in in the particular cases of someone like Bryce Miller, if he would be more inclined to accept uh, that kind of extension if there's some more money up front in 2024. Mm-hmm. If there's, right. you know, not a lot, but like here's a million bucks, here's 2 million dollars. Yeah, here's 2 million bucks instead of 775. Yeah. Like congrats, so, you're a millionaire now. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yep. Uh, by the way, real quick, just going to throw this out there. Uh, Gilbert extension, five and 90 is, I think, where I'm at. I do five and 100. Uh, right. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, Kirby, because he has an extra year, uh, it, it's it's probably six and it, six. If you're, and buying, if you're buying out a free agent year on Gilbert, it probably has to be 27 20, to 30 million dollars. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking 30 million bucks. Yeah. And he's yeah. got four shots at arbitration. Yeah. So and then, and then Kirby Kirby probably the 30. same if you're if yeah, if you're buying free agent years, because you're projecting and his camp is going to be projecting very high with them. As probably they yeah, as they should. Yeah. Twenty eight to thirty four million dollars anywhere Something in like that. that range for that free agent yeah. year or multiple free agent years. Mm-hmm. I think I think both of those guys to buy out one free agent year. Will cost the Mariners roughly a hundred million dollar contracts on both yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. That yeah. being said, if you could have George Kirby and Logan Gilbert for the next at minimum, the next six years at two hundred million dollars combined, take it to the bank and laugh. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. yeah, obviously Gilbert and and Logan, they're the most talked about extension candidates. So today we wanted to do some uh, some of the less others talked about guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. I mean, Cal's been talked about sure. a lot, but that's you know, again, that's interesting. That's such a very, very interesting case because mm-hmm. of his age, because of the club control that's still involved there, and the position that he plays. Yep. Um, yeah, that's it's not as cut and dry as a lot of fans want it to be. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's fairly cut and dry for the Mariners to a certain degree, but for Cal specifically, I think it's a really more it's a much more interesting conversation from Cal's point of view rather than the Mariners, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm interested to, to see kind of where he would be at uh, with that and where his camp would be at with that. All right. That's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Ty Dan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Ty Dan Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.